Okay, I don't mean to scare you, but I think we are going to die right now. Hey everybody, so what was that all about? Let's run that again and see if we can actually kill some goblins right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, they take a lot of hits to die, but also do you as well. I guess I'm going to die right now. Yeah. I'm dead. All right then, how do we go about uh, reverse engineering this project? Step one. Sorry, uh, that was too loud. <laughs> Step one. Uh, we need to make sure we are in the main scene. Of course, it's a main over here, a main. And I mean, it's the main scene, but it might not be the main, main scene. I mean, the, the scene that first runs when the game's played. So how do we find out which one is that? Well, you go over here, project, project settings, general, run, main scene, over here. All right, then, it's the main scene. It could not have been, all right? It's scene, main, main scene. Over here, scene, main, main scene. Nice. So, step two. <laughs> Where is everything? Why is everything black and we only have our hero over here in his idle animation? What's going on? Well, let's expand this tree. Main, map, hero, well, that's all. Main has a map inside it, with a hero inside it, with a camera inside it. And we have a canvas layer over here with a, an FPS label. You can see this label on the top left over here. Yeah, it updates every frame, all right, as it should. Let's just close it. But what are we going to do on this video? Because there's a lot going on here. Let's just play that again. There is player movement, there is path fighting from the enemies, there are destructibles, there are hitboxes, there are some animations. And of course, there is a random generated map. Um, in a very clever way, by the way. Oh my god, I'm going to die again. It's very hard right now. All right. So this series is going to take some videos. Uh, the, the pacing will depend on you guys, on your feedback. But uh, I intend to cover everything. Uh, albeit a little faster or slower, depending on your level. And in this first video, we're just going to go a little bit further than we already did. We, we found the main scene, but right now we are going to look at the main scripts. You can see there are three scripts over here. You can see the nodes that have scripts because they have the, these, these, these kind of symbols over here. Let's open. Man script, map script, and hero script. All right then. What should we look next for? We should look for this ready method, this process method, ready method, process method, and hero doesn't have it. All right then. Hero, although he doesn't have it, he has some methods that look a little bit suspicious, like update input, we're gonna talk about it later, update attack, on melee body entered. Uh, I've just opened this project with you as well. Uh, let's leave it like this for now. But it's probably here uh, where the hero is hit. It's probably a signal that is being sent here. And if it's a goblin, he, he receives a hit. Yeah, of course. All right then. So what are we going to do? We're not going to go uh, over through every line over here in ready, um, process, ready and process, because it's a lot for just one video. But what we're going to do, we're going to go only over this these like eight ten lines over here in process main why because it's simple um and it's also in the beginning because as you you might know and if you don't know i'm going to explain to you right now this ready method it runs every time let, let me just phrase it the correct way this is a scene the main scene it has a node every time this scene is loaded into the game and the node has a script the ready function is called. The, the first time it's instantiated in the scene, all right? So the game runs, main scene goes into action, and the script runs. All right then, this ready script runs. Let's just ignore everything below here right now and just look to that. Private label underscore FPS is get node canvas layer, get node FPS as label. What's going on here? Well, it's simple. We have in this scene a canvas layer node. Within it, uh, 
label node called FPS. And that's what we're getting here. We are saying to Godot, well, give me the node called Canvas Layer inside it, give me the node called FPS and treat it, treat it as a label. All right, then that's, that's what we're doing. We're assigning to underscore FPS that. All right. And then we have process. Process runs at every frame. The, the scene is instantiated. So every frame, I mean, many times per second, these lines are running. So let's see what they do. Int FPS is of type engine get frames per second. All right, get frames per second returns on float. A float is like 60.54, but we don't want that. We want just the integer part. That's why we are casting to put something be between parentheses over here is casting. It's transforming this type in an integer. And how, how do we know to type engine dot? Well, everything uh, in C sharp, but in other languages that starts with a capital letter is a reserved namespace, in this case, engine dot. And we can see all, all the methods that are suggested for us over here, like get frames per second. All right, then. Uh, how did we know that? Well, let's just talk uh, real quick about the ID we are using. It's not like an actual ID. It's more like a, a hybrid between text editor and ID, Visual Studio Code. I recommend it a lot. And we are using some extensions over here, the C, to, <laughs> C, C Sharp tools for Godot and Godot tools. Uh, I have a lot uh, of other extensions because, I mean, I do use Visual Studio Code for a lot of other stuff. But on, if you don't know how to set up that, uh, I will leave a link in the description down below of Games From Scratch, where he goes step by step on how to set up Godot to work with Visual Studio Code so you can have, like me, out completion. You type something and you can see a lot of explanation and it's a lot of help. All right? I'll leave a, li a link in the description down below. Let's continue. In the next line, we compare FPS to underscore current FPS. At first, current FPS underscore current FPS is assigned to zero. So if our first value to FPS is like 64, well, it's going to be different. So we're not going to run here. We are going to, to, to say what this does a little bit later. These four lines then, what do they do? They are very similar. First, we check if the value to FPS is more than 30. If it is, we're going to set a property. You can see string property object value to a color, to this value, color dot color n red, all right, orange, yellow, and green. All right, if it's smaller than 30, it's going to be red, all right. The font color is going to be red. If it's between 30 and 50, orange. Between 50 and 60, yellow. And bigger than 60, green. Ah, all right, I get it. And how, how did I know this set method? Where did it come from? Well, it's a method from the label node, all right? Finally, we are going to set the text in the label node to FPS, this space FPS. All right, that's why when we run the game, we see FPS floating over there because it, it's run every frame in the game. And finally, we are setting this current FPS to the value over here. So we can finally talk about this line because what this line is doing actually is just, let's just go over here, all right then. It's just saving um, processing time from the game, saving computational processing processes. How so? Because you see, this runs uh, at every frame in the game. So we don't want it to, to be doing calculations that it doesn't need to. So what's going on over here is that if in the next frame, the, the frame right now is equal to the it's called current frame, but it's actually the last frame. We don't need to change anything. So we just return nothing because this is a function that returns void. I mean, nothing. So the, the function is ju just going to stop over here. Imagine a world where the FPS the first time is 60. So we paint it green. And every time after that, it's still 60. We're never going to do that again. So we are saving a lot of computational power. In reality though, we are going to fluctuate a little, but every time it's the same, we are going to save the, the game processing power. 
And that's important, all right? So that's it for now. In the next video, we're going to go, to go about the, the other lines over here in the ready method in main scene. And eventually we're going to go about map scene, process, ready, hero, and everything else, step by step. That's it for this video. And right now, if you want to close it, you can already, although I don't recommend it. And I'm going to explain to you where it came from. Uh, real quick though, uh, I'm going to save you some time. It all started when I mm, searched for good old C-sharp tutorials and came across 14 days ago to this guy over here at Reddit. This link is going to be in the description too, below. This is a, um, actually a very nice game over here. Let's just put it on full screen a little. And he had just released this game, the, the full source code, for anyone who wanted it. And how could you have access to it? Through his Patreon. Over here. Uh, it was the project he released on August 1st. Right now, he has already released other ones, the latest one yesterday. And I'm one of his patrons. This is an anonymous uh, tab, just so I can show you his about. Oh, not over here. Amazing. Over here, actually. And I made an agreement with him. I asked him if I could use his project to teach Godot C Sharp on YouTube right now. And he said yes. And all I owe it to him was to give him a shout out. Because if you want to have access to the source code, you might as well become a patron of his. Otherwise, you can just go through the whole series with me and try to replicate everything. Although you have to also find not only the source code, but the sprites used. But that's up to you if you don't want to become a patron of his. That's all right, though, because probably the sprites are free somewhere. If you can find it, let ask me that I can give you some help. And that's it. So for the next videos, we'll be going through this project, going step by step. If that's too advanced, please let me know. Otherwise, if that's too beginning, beginner-like, beginner-friendly, let me know that I can speed up. And that's all for now. If you like the video, please consider subscribing, uh, give it a like, although it's not as important as subscribing, because as well, if you subscribe, you are going to be notified about the next videos, and I'm going to be releasing next videos very soon. So if you like, I mean, game dev tutorials, meta game dev tutorials, and everything about it, well, this channel is going to be about it. So that's it <laughs> for now. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you in the next one.